Santos, the French maker. Eyebrows joins Mitch at his tower, where he's been obsessively watching a woman, apparently for days on end, so much so that he's memorized the exact time she swims and how long each swim takes her. She swims every morning at 10 and every afternoon at 5. Takes her exactly 20 minutes to swim around that buoy and back. Well, you must really like this woman, Mitch. Yeah, she's okay. Mitch also drops a mention that Stephanie has been asked to sail around the world with Riley, her geologist boyfriend, who she forgot about for four episodes while she was thinking about Mitch's wing-wang doodle. Riley ceases to exist when I'm jealous and then reappears when the plot needs him to. It's super convenient. Hey, didn't Mitch and Stephanie get together or something like two episodes ago? Oh well. You think she'll do it? Never. She'll think about it, debate it, weigh the pros and cons, and then play it safe. Mitch Buchanan, future P.I. Meanwhile, I don't know if the audience is interested, but by the way, the FBI wants to place an undercover agent on the beach. They'll never get away with it. Those guys all look alike. Bad haircuts, pale skin, dark sunglasses. Oh, you can spot them a mile away. Uh? The FBI agent is a hot lady. Forget everything Mitch said. The glass ceiling's just been shattered. I heard women are even in the police force now. As long as you're not a black lifeguard, we gotta wait for season 7 for that. This is FBI Special Agent Morgan Christopher, who doesn't think much of the lifeguard profession or Mitch, despite his friendly, condescending attitude. She is staking out the beach house of the lady Mitch was creepily keeping tabs on. The woman is dating an escaped mobster, so they have reason to believe she'll meet up with him before leaving the country. Well, is there anything I can do to help? You are window dressing, Mr. Buchanan. The best way you can help is by not interfering. <gasps> Garner would let me interfere. I'm tired of this sexist treatment. Looks like you're getting a taste of what women go through every day, Mitch. It's a girl thing. <laughs> Shut up, tits. Have a good time tomorrow morning. Wait a minute. Where are you going to be? Sailing around the world with Riley? I'm considering it. Yeah, I'll believe it when I see it. <laughs> stupid Stephanie and her stupid boyfriend. It's because I have a pee-pee, isn't it? Meanwhile, Eyebrows is trying to inform some Japanese tourists that their boat is unsafe. Luckily, Pamela-san is here to help. Mizu no naka. Nimo te ite wa ikemasa kiken desu. Yeah, CJ speaks Japanese. It was so obvious this whole time. Stick with blue. I wish I was bilingual. You speak Japanese? Skoshi. Oh, no. Why did that warrant an oh no? While this is going on, some Dutch tourists are taking photos when one of them falls off of the Rocks of Doom. Eyebrows rescues her, and it's Mitch's old housekeeper. Oh, I mean, someone named Greta. Women can be housekeepers now, too? When will men overcome the matriarchy? This is good. This is good. What's going on? Search me. This whole day has been crazy. I mean, I've stopped a diamond heist via a motorcycle car chase, but people speaking different languages stops the madness! Greta is immensely grateful for the save, stating that in her village, if someone saves your life, you have to return the favor. Ja, have you ever been to the Netherlands? Prove me wrong! She's willing to do anything. Cook, clean, be Mitch's housekeeper. I don't know why she got pigeonholed into this particular kind of role on Baywatch, but alright. Sounds like a good deal. Hello, we're dating now. You know I love you, CJ. That's why I named my houseboat the CJ Breeze. Meanwhile, in less comic relief he plots, the ominous tune of sexism plays on. FBI Special Agent Morgan Christopher continues to be a real buzzkill, and Mitch questions why she's got that stick so far up her bum. There's a lot at stake here, and I'm not going to let some wave jockey who likes to hang out in bag rays blow it for me. Ooh. And there's their suspect, wearing a bathing suit designed like a giant pair of men's briefs, the trademark of a guilty party. Much to FBI Special Agent Morgan Christopher's surprise, Mitch actually has some lifeguarding to do. While he's pulling a save, a woman comes to the tower to ask for help. Looks like FBI Special Agent Morgan Christopher is gonna learn what being a lifeguard is really like. Okay guys, look. If she wasn't trained or intending to actually do any lifeguard stuff, she could have just hung out in the tower not in a lifeguard uniform. Just saying. Look at how much airtime eyebrows gets here. Whee! Oh no you don't, you frog eater! My save! Okay, fine, whatever. You take this guy. As long as I get the hot one. Got the hot one! It was me! You all saw it! I'm fine! Leave me alone! I'm fine! I'm fine! I save her life without even gonna thank you! You're lucky, trust me. 
I can't tell you two how much you don't have any real problems. Meanwhile, Stephanie is unsure if she should sail the world with Riley or not. I shouldn't be taken in by a man like this, but he's got those sexy Kenny Loggins vibes. Speaking of romantic troubles, Eyebrows has a problem with being doted on with product placement from Greta. Note that his issue is not that a woman has enslaved herself to him or that he already has a girlfriend, but that as a lifeguard, he could get in trouble. If things were different, I could exploit the fact I saved your life to get sexual favors from you all day, but it was not to be, my love. It's the 90s. Things have changed. Men and women have changed. Yeah, it's true. Men are more liberated now. Mm, I couldn't do my FBI special agenting without a cool, refreshing bottle of Gatorade by my side. Oh, you got the piss yellow Gatorade, huh? Personally, I'm a fan of Windex Blue. I don't want to put the FBI on blast or anything, but I'm not sure the people they're going after are all that cunning or hard to catch. Hey, you turned it on, didn't you? Oh, I forgot. <laughs> After Mitch saves FBI Special Agent Morgan Christopher once again by tipping her off when the woman is coming home, he's still met with ungrateful attitude. I thought I saved the whole deal, not to mention your personal butt, not to mention your entire life out there. Oh, her entire life. So not just her partial life then. Gosh, Mitch is so humble. Mitch throws around the term wave jockey again, as if that's a term anyone outside of Baywatch has ever used, getting defensive about her stereotyping him, while also forgetting he did the exact same thing to her. I can't believe she thinks I'm some dumb lifeguard who interferes with criminal investigations that have nothing to do with my profession. I'm gonna go interfere in this investigation by pretending I'm looking for a lifeguard Olympic sponsor and planting a bug in the house to prove her wrong. Yes, that's really what happens. I'm going door to door to try and get people to sponsor me for the lifeguard Olympics. Meanwhile, on the CJ Breeze, Greta has made lunch for Eyebrows and CJ. You know, just because she makes it doesn't mean you have to eat it, but whatever. They're both tired of Greta's groveling, and so Eyebrows comes up with an ingenious plan to get her out of their hair. Stage his near death so she can repay her debt! Cue the montage of Eyebrows hilariously trying to kill himself. Don't help, Pamela. Just pose with the Gatorade. This montage is hilarious, by the way. Eyebrows is basically just recreating all of Eddie's greatest hits. After several failed attempts, Eyebrows' best scene ever plays out. While he's eating some nasty Dutch food, a killer dog makes his way onto the CJ Breeze. I warned you this would happen! I warned you about dogs, bro! I told you, dog! It keeps happening! glad after all the lame fake attempts on his life, the real one is the lamest of all. Luckily, Greta is nearby, and she finally saves his life. Got to pretend I'm unconscious while lifting myself up. <coughs> I want the world to know, dogs really are evil. After successfully planting the bug and doing the exact thing she told him not to, FBI Special Agent Morgan Christopher has warmed up to Mitch. She admits that she was projecting her attitude on him because, seriously, her father was a surfer who abandoned her family. Pfft, typical woman and her daddy issues. That's why they should never be led into the FBI. Beach House Lady is in trouble, and Mitch goes to rescue her with a little help from Numi. Well, pack it in, boys. This case is as good as solved. But twist! The woman didn't actually drown. She was faking it so she could escape with her boyfriend. Uh... So why did she bother faking drowning again? The only thing that does is get the lifeguard's attention and guarantee she'll be seen getting onto the boat. All right, Numi, let's go. Oh, I'm coming with you. It's okay. I'm glad Mitch gave her permission to be part of her own investigation. Whoa, this is hot! I know, right? Nutshot! Despite my testicles, I too can fight dirty! 
And that's why lifeguards should always be involved in criminal investigations. Cut to them having a romantic champagne picnic where Morgan goes on about how wrong she was and Mitch is the greatest? Wow, they sure turned it around for her character. They're about to have some smoocheroos when Buzzkill's Stephanie shows up. Excuse me, I could give you some kissing tips if you want them, Mitchell. You're a dead woman. You're dead to me. Stephanie has decided to go on the trip with Riley after all, and Mitch sends her away with a goodbye kiss, not to send any mixed signals or anything. I'll send you postcards. Yeah. All right, now when you get into you send me a postcard, okay? Did you hear that? It was my idea now. I don't know if Alexandra Paul was busy with a movie or something. They make a big deal out of her leaving, but it's only a six-episode absence, which is nothing compared to most of the other opening credit people. Notably, her sister is not present during the send-off. You're going on a trip around the world with your boyfriend without me? I hate you, Stephanie! The last minute and a half of the episode is just dedicated to a montage of Stephanie and her boyfriend on a boat, as if this plot was primarily about them, so I feel this is very in character. Way to hog the spotlight, Stephanie! Next time on Baywatch, Kay is back and pretending she's a character, but her restaurant promotion slash rare coin scavenger hunt might spell trouble for this beach. Get them dollar dollar bills! Uh -huh.